Profanity is guaranteed. Viewer discretion is advised. It's going to be one of those episodes where it's like, oh, you weren't there. You just didn't get it. You don't get it. Spence understands. Yeah, because we went to Vegas. So, yeah. <laughs> How, that was exactly what was my first thing. How did you find Vegas, baby? Like a fucking dream. It was like literally living in a dream. Yeah, it's bonkers, um, isn't it? I wasn't ready to quite... I wanted an extra day or two. Yeah. Just to fit in a bit more things. Because yes. obviously Steamer took up a big portion of it. And like in the evening, then we had events to go to and, and whatnot. Um but I'm desperate to go back already. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. Fucking loved it. And um, what did you think about the Haunted Museum? <laughs> <laughs> like, for those who aren't watching, I'm kind of doing this weird little shimmy shit. And Spence really liked it as well. It was so good. It was kind of like everything that you said it would be. Yeah. Um, I was worried that I bigged it up too much. I mean, t- t- obviously, you know, having a tour guide is really, really good. Um... But I felt perhaps maybe we could have had longer in certain areas yeah. to look at more things. Like the serial killer room. Yeah, I didn't get to read everything and it kind of felt like a bit of a whoosh around the room. Yeah. Um, so I didn't quite take in everything, which means I just got to fucking go again, and I? Yeah. Yeah, I, and I will say, like, it for me it was a different experience going back because I did have more things, I had different things. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like you say, you know, the first time it's like so much to take in. Mm. And then the second time, okay, you can take a bit more in. But next time we go, we want to do the nighttime torch tour, don't we? Where you just do the ghost hunting. Yeah, and you literally buy yourself a thing. So it's after dark, the museum's all closed down, it's all in darkness. There's two tour guides in just two certain positions because of safety. Mm. But you go around in your group with a mini flashlight. Yeah. And you do your own ghost hunt. I think we should do that. I think we should do that. That'd be really fun. Also go to the museum in the daytime just to take everything in again. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And we went to the Neon Boneyard, which again, I've been to, but even Spence hadn't. I know. I completely forgot. I I knew it was going to be like a load of signs, but I forgot you said they were like the original Vegas signs. Mm. So that was incredible. It was, that was smaller than I expected. Yeah. Um, But like seeing the original Hard Rock Cafe guitar and just... Oh. It's amazing, mm. isn't it? I'm so glad you liked it because it's. I've spoken to people before and they're like, I fucking hate Vegas. And I'm like, I, I can understand why. Mm. But at the same time, I love it and I would go back every year because I love it that much. That is kind of the environment we were thriving. Yes. I think. Yeah. It's definitely not a relaxing holiday. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, I like to have a relaxing holiday. Yeah. But you don't go to Vegas thinking that you're just going to chill out. No, it's definitely not that kind it of It is full on. Yeah. But the good thing about it is that we spent a lot of time in, like, you know, at events that so you're having a drink or in the, the... We made, like, best friends with the hotel bar guy, Peter. Yeah. Um, he got me smashed. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a night, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> and um, so... But I never woke up with, like, feeling slightly hungover or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, I didn't get, like... Blazo, like completely gazebo. Blazo, though. Um, it's all the oxygen they pump in, babe. Works. Yeah, I'll take it. If that's yeah. how we're gonna fucking feel, then Absolutely. I'll take it. Fucking novelty for me, though. Like sitting there with a with a Bud Light, and I'm having a ciggy because you yeah. can smoke, and that was amazing. Yeah, you can. Well, it just meant I smoked more. And the nice thing is, yes, you can smoke, but you wouldn't be able to tell because you can't smell it. Yeah. Because they keep recirculating the air and putting oxygen in. Yeah. Very so clever. So good. It's literally like being on a spaceship. It's amazing. And we went to a party in the basement of the Mob Museum. Yeah, we? that was amazing. It was very cool. It was like a speakeasy underneath the Mob Museum um, and you had to give a password. We didn't, actually. They just let us straight in, so we obviously... Looked no, like... um, I think Spence gave the password. Oh, OK. Possibly. I might have got that wrong. And that was very cool. And they brewed their own moonshine in there, yeah. which was very awesome as well. Oh. And we did lots I of stuff. I fucking love Vegas. Yeah, it is amazing. So you'd go back? I'd go back. One hundred percent. Take Mark. He, oh, he doesn't want to come. No, he does want to come. <laughs> he does want to come. He does. He'd have a whale of a time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you would stop shaking your head at me. You're so wrong. The, the other thing we did was um, any of you who know Hunter S. Thompson and Fear and Loathing of Las Vegas, um, that's one of my favourite films and Spencer's. So we wanted to go to Circus Circus because. Mm. 
that's the sixth time I've been and I still hadn't gone there. Yeah. So it's, for those of you who don't know, a big part or like a key part of that film is filmed in mm -hmm. Circus Circus. And it's when uh, Hunter S. Thompson and his lawyer are, I think that like they've taken ether, they've taken coke, they've taken mescaline, they've taken everything. And they are just tripping balls in this janky fucking <laughs> casino. And it was us three sat at the bar thinking, how can we get some mescaline? Yeah. <laughs> Make it really we, authentic. Exactly. We've got to do this right. We need to be method. Um, so we kind of had whizzed round there. Mm. We found the rotating bit. Um, we should have probably had a drink at the bar. Probably, I yeah. think next time we'll do that. But the thing we didn't know was there was Zoltar, which is actually from the film Big. Yes. So, again, if you don't know Big, it's your homework. Go and watch it. It's got Tom Hanks in it. It's a brilliant film. And there's like a... What would you call it? Like a sideshow amusement cabinet? It, thing. It's just like an amusement. It, yeah, it's an amusement. And you, you pay some money and then it tells your fortune. Yeah. It's like a little robot thing. Um, yeah, called Zolta Speaks. And they've got one in Circus Circus. So we all did it. Spence got us all one. And um, the crazy it, thing is, is that they all really relate to us. Yeah, that was actually fucking spooky. Yeah. And there's some lucky numbers on them. So I put them on the lottery. I've got my fingers crossed. So if if I win, these guys obviously win, and uh, we'll be basically doing this full time. That would be insane. That'd be so good. Uh, we might have to get another mark. I don't know if he'll want to work with us if he's won the lottery. He would, I reckon. Maybe. I think he'd still want to hang out. <laughs> if you get paid. paid. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've won the lottery, mate. <laughs> 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 Shut up. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that was really fun. I'm trying to think what other stuff happened that was kind of relevant. There was a shopping cart car. That was weird. Uh, that must they, they do like tours. Yeah, yeah. I saw lots of photos of people from SEMA in that thing, um, because obviously the photos from SEMA were all doing the rounds yeah. on social media. Um, and I did have a few people say, "Oh, you're the NEC Classic Car Show," which I don't go to, by the way. I boycotted that fucking years ago. Um, May we ask like, why? Oh, I'll explain in in two point two seconds. Okay. Um, and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm in Vegas. <laughs> so, I can't come to Birmingham. I got invited to SEMA. Yeah, I'm literally at SEMA. I was sponsored. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so basically, Paul and I were the only people that never got paid to work at the NEC. Fuckers. So I boycotted them. Sorry, not sorry. Fuck you guys. Um, and I only ever got abuse there anyway, so fuck them. Really? Yeah, because it's very... It's the classic car yeah. lot, so no disrespect to the classic car lot. I love classic cars, but I don't appreciate death threats and shit like that. Oh, it's what's wrong with people? Yeah, just calm the At fuck At the end of the day, down. it's a fucking car. Fucking car, right? And also, if it's my car, I'll do what the fuck I want with it. Yeah. So... Bleh. Exactly. <laughs> really thought you were going to no say something response. profound then. Yeah, no, the profoundness has left me since I've come back to reality, I think. Yeah, I think we left it in <laughs> Vegas. Oh, yeah. And going back to Haunted Museum, we got free T-shirts. Yes, so I now, when you when we first started the podcast and like you were wearing your Zach Bagans Haunted Museum T-shirts, I, like, I really want one of those. I finally got one. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And then we bought matching T-shirts for Vegas, matching hoodies. Yeah, we did. You've got to mind your foot, you're kicking shit. Sorry. <laughs> Feeling violent because I'm missing Vegas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so good. The, the thing about it was just the constant laughter. Yeah. Like, it was like from therapy. the first night we got there, I was in like bad but good pain yeah. from laughing constantly. Yeah. Um, it's like it makes your cheeks hurt, and Spencer and insides... saying the back of his head was hurting. I don't know why. Well, I, I suppose like I don't know, like that. this. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing we just ran out of time to do was to go and see the Bonnie and Clyde car. Yeah, we never managed it. But that's fine because we'll do it next time. And to be fair, I think that was quite uh, a way out. Enthusiastic of us because it was sort of a good forty-five minutes drive out. Then yeah, and we just did, we literally didn't have the time to do no. it. Uh, but we always do that. We always try and cram in a month's worth of stuff in a couple of days. Exactly. We did get tattoos, though. We've got matching tattoos with Spence that say wolf pack. And Not wolf week. pack from Emmerdale. <laughs> wolf. Wolf pack, as in Vegas. Twice you um, were asked that. Oh, do you really like Emmerdale? 
No. No, no. No, it was just, I don't know, we were having a moment in the bar and we were all laughing and stuff like that. And then we all just, just hugged each other. Legs were akimbo. So I'm holding onto my lip balm. Legs sort of akimbo in the air. That sounds not, not like... Not in a sexual no. way. And then I just started singing... We're the three best friends that Did anyone Did you start has... it? Yeah. I thought Spence started it. Oh, I know. Well I'm pretty sure you. it was me. I didn't even know that. Well done. I think it was me. No, well, you fucking have it. And then Spencer was fucking pissing himself. And then <laughs> it, that's, that that's just the theme of Vegas then. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, the wolf pack. So you, would you would you recommend going to uh, the Haunted Museum? Oh, God, yeah. To the Spooky Lovers. And the weirdest thing about it, obviously, you've got like some of the most haunted objects in the world there. And some of the fucking creepiest, but the weirdest thing that happened was um, you have like several tour guides through. I think they each take like a section of of the museum, and um, we turned up at like I suppose what you would call like a freak show bit. And yep. it's the guy that's got like the record for st- um, the longest drill bit through his nose into his brain intentionally or something oh, like it's that. Fucking mental. It's like one. How the fuck do you discover that you have that talent? What, yeah, how do you even get to that stage? And are you affected? I don't know. Are you okay, hon? Yeah. But anyway, he was asking us where we were from. I think we were the only three from, like, that weren't from America. Yeah. And so he said the UK. He knew a little bit about the UK, so we asked where we are from. And because nobody knows where Newmarket is or anything like that, I was just like, oh, Cambridge. And the tour guide, tour guide goes... I was born and raised in Newmarket. It's like, so was I. So bonkers. And um, she goes, yeah, my mum was the manager of so-and-so. I was like, I know exactly who you are. Um, I was like, are your nieces Taz and T? And um, and she was like, yeah. I was like, Taz used to be my best friend in middle school. Oh, you couldn't have made that up. Like, that's yeah. so crazy. It was mental. She I was, was like, really nice as well. And, like, I know the... Um, I didn't make it up. <laughs> and she has um, quite a well-known sort of, like, name, but spelt differently. Yeah. And I was like, I remember, for some reason, I made the connection really quickly. And I was like, I knew their auntie was American and spelt her name like that. Yeah. And for some reason, I was just like, I know exactly who you are before I'd even sort of said it. So cool. Yeah. And she said Zach was really nice, which yeah. we know he's obviously going to be very nice. I'm going to have to see if I can get an autograph for you now that I've got an in. <laughs> or a date. Or a date. Or a date. Or a date. Speaking of dates. Speaking of, no, I'm not going to talk about that. No. Um, <laughs> so, um, catch up co- uh, connected to cars as well. Obviously, we'll probably come back to Vegas. Um, my fucking suspension broke on my Z. And it's the Fucking bastard roads around here. I mean... Well, I did go to London as well. To be fair, though, the, the roads in London were very good. I mean, you don't move to a fence and expect it to be a smooth ride. Well, I just don't think, do I? But also, you've had your car lowered ridiculously. I know. Um, so, basically, I was speaking to Spence, and it's obviously fixable, and I will get it fixed, but... He was like, if you, unless you change the ride height, it's going to keep happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not going to change the ride height. Um, so the next best thing was to buy a sensible car. Mm. Um, but it still needed to be Helen. It's still... Yeah, that's the thing. I can't just drive a fucking Dacia Duster and let my soul just die while I'm driving it. And also, I've got no fucking money. Yeah. I literally have no budget for this. So... He was like, look for an old Beetle, look for... A, not an old Beetle, a, a diesel Beetle, like, of the new shape. Oh, yeah, apologies to anyone who drives a Duster. No, I will not apologise <laughs> who drives a Duster, because they drive like a bunch of cunts. I'm sorry, Are but... they like the new Audi slash Beamer drivers? Huh? Honestly, worse. <laughs> Absolutely worse. Anyone I've ever seen driving Daisy Duster is an absolute hoon and not in a good way. <laughs> and they, and on, I've driven one, and they are the worst things to drive in the world and i've driven some shit cars are they worst absolutely of course daryl wanted one did he really oh Oh, no daryl i'm not even gonna apologize to dacia dacia whatever you're fucking called because i just don't like you um (laughs) so (laughs) your shit your shit your shit so or if you would no actually we don't want you to sponsor the podcast you can sponsor these two not me i don't know if that works yeah i mean if yeah, money talks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, whilst I was looking for Beatles, randomly, 
there was an advert for a Jeep mm. uh, for 850 quid. And I was like, that's a bit nice. I was thinking, what the fuck's wrong with it to be that cheap? Yeah. Has done a lot of miles, but it's diesel. Uh, long MOT, um, no real problem apart from the gearbox. Gearbox so is fuck. Problem with the transmission. But um, Spencer was like, just Google it and see what it could be. Mm. Um, and I, I went on some forums and they were like, oh, half the time, if you just reset it on the computer, it's fine. Or if you do a transmission oil change, it's fine. Oh, so I'm okay. going to start with those things. And then if not, there's a small part that kind of grinds down that's easy to replace. And then worst case scenario, I replace the gearbox at Spencer's place. He's already said he'll help me. Yeah. And it does run and drive. It just doesn't drive above 50 at the minute. Which you don't so, need to do. More than that, really, around not around here, these exactly. here parts. Um, so I'm really excited. So it's a 2004 Jeep Cherokee, nice, uh, it's black. Um, Mark's gonna de chrome it for me, okay, yeah, uh, and put tints on all the windows <laughs> because I can't leave it as it is. No, of course not. <laughs> and then, um, hang on, can we do mine first? <laughs> yes, we do. No, we do need to do yours first. Yours should have been done before mine, in fact. We will, in fact, we'll get on to him about that. Um, that's my fault. I need to sort that out. And fuck's sake, Helen. I know. <laughs> just trying to do too much. And I'm trying to blag some tires. I've got an air filter and just some. Yeah, it's got heated seats, cassette player, manual sunroof, CD player, play, play, play. Sorry. Yep. No, don't apologise for feeder. So, so that was an unexpected car-related situation this week. Do you think maybe we should talk about SEMA as well? Yeah, we probably should talk about SEMA. Yeah. How did you find SEMA? Well, f fucking overwhelming for a start. It's yeah. so big. Like, I mean, I didn't really venture anywhere other than pipes, exhausts and mm -hmm. uh, cold case. Uh, that's because, you know, I was your right-hand woman, whatever you needed. You giving me more on support. More on support. Um, and just, like, chatting to people that were coming up about you, your art, the podcast... Yes, we did talk to quite a lot of people about the podcast. And we met a listener. We did. Which was phenomenal. It was like, oh, I've been really quiet for a bit because, um, I don't know, I think... Um, was that the day we were really tired? Yeah. The Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. And uh, sort of, you were cracking on and I was just kind of like in a world. And he, he said um, something about the podcast. I was like, oh! All of a sudden, I was awake, like a fucking jolt of electricity <laughs> gone up me bum. And, um, yeah, it was just like, oh, my God, we're fucking a real-life listener. Real-life listener, Helen. Listener. <laughs> and we also, well, between us, we convinced more people to listen as well, hopefully. Well, yeah. To I Lena. Mean, to, oh, she was amazing. Oh, my God, she was so amazing. We, we sat talking to her for ages, and um, I really wanted... She wanted to take us out for um, a birthday drink, because um, whilst we were in Vegas, I had my birthday. Um, <laughs> of course, she I mean, did. The fuck says they they spent their thirty fifth birthday in in exactly. Vegas. It was incredible, and um, but we just again ran out of fucking time. Yeah. Trying so to get stuff in. yeah, I'll I'll send her a message and be like, if I can come next year, then we'll all get together. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, and um, so for your birthday, we went to Fremont Street. Should we go back to see my first? Sorry, and then my yeah. birthday. <laughs> Go on then. Oh no, you you talk. You were the sponsored one out there. Well, um, so that's like the fourth scene I've been to. Um, and I was doing some painting there. Uh, and I loved the guys that we were on stand with, pipes, oh. exhaust, and cold case radiators. And they had an incredible house they'd rented up the road. Yeah, probably about ten minutes off yeah. the strip. Yeah, real seventies vibe. Low, oh like steps down, like to a bar. It was so freaking cool. And then Dave um, was like, who's one of the pipes guys, was like, we think it might be a porno house. <laughs> like, what makes you think that? He's like, follow me. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, so we walk sort of with him to the to the master bedroom and it's just got this giant fucking round bed. And yeah, we're like, amazing. definitely a porno house. Such a cool house. Mm. And... Because it because there's so many of them, it just makes sense for them to rent the house. It's oh, cheaper definitely, than a hotel. Yeah. And it was just such a cool house. I'd like to have gone back there in the day to see it because I was mm. a bit obsessed with it because it was so retro. It was so nice. It was lovely. And we had a private chef, which is just... And the food was great. Amazing. Yeah. And it was so fancy. 
Um, and then we turned up. <laughs> and then we turned up. <laughs> and lowered the tone. We did a bit, didn't we? But uh, no, it was really, really nice. Actually, that was quite a chilled night, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I went to the bar afterwards in the hotel. Yes. And uh, there was a DJ there, wasn't there, on the first night. So we'd sort of not really slept on the plane thinking we'll get to the hotel, have an early night, sleep through and start tomorrow on American yeah. time. And we got there and we were like, well, should we just go to the hotel bar? Mm. Because we obviously, we'd met Spence at the airport. Yeah. And we were like, let's go to hotel bar. Um, and it turned out to be a really nice bar called the Casbar Lounge. Yeah. In the Sahara. Yeah. And that's where we met Peter. That's where we met Peter. Our favourite barman and Madeline. Madeline, yeah. And honestly, the customer service area is amazing. I did actually feedback. I was like, your oh, you lifts did. might not fucking work, but your customer service is incredible. Yeah. And on the first night was DJ Magic. This man, I want to take him home. You have to describe him. He he was this little 70-odd-year-old DJ who was loving life. And I'd later found out from... Um, one of the bar staff that he was going through a really difficult time, but he always showed up and he gave it everything. And he had the best fucking playlist. Oh my God, it was the best set I've ever heard. It was so good. That that man's a fucking DJ genius. Absolute genius. And was that the night that I introduced you to Pat Butcher? I think so. And that's also the night you were tipping. And we sort of said, well, what would you do in the UK? Because obviously you tip with dollar bills over there like yeah. this so it's like this but in the UK we've UK, only got pound coins so it's chuck like just chucking them at chuck people a <laughs> can of Stella in your hand so that's but, where that yeah, came yeah I, I, he just he was so he was life and I have to admit so the pussycat dolls don't ya yep it's a tune is it not oh my god it's so fucking good when I was in upper school I was I hung out with some very, very funny people. Now, I can't take credit for this. Okay. You but could I have am just still... gone along with it because I, I know. thought it was you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not that clever funny, if yeah, that makes sense. Are. But if you know EastEnders, you mo more than likely know the character Pat Butcher. Yeah. White hair, blue eyeshadow, pink lipstick. Lots of leopard print. Lots of leopard print. Not quite Bet Lynch. No. But close. Yeah. Um, married to Frank. Mm -hmm. Right, Pat. Stepmum of Bianca and Ricky. No, stepmum of someone. Ricky. Or mum of Ricky. Ricky! Oh. oh, I can't remember. But, um, yeah. And then uh, Frank would go, all right, Pat. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. When I, they came up with the with changing the lyrics to "Don't You," so it's the original was "Don't You Wish Your Girlfriend Was Hot Like Me," changed it to "Don't You Wish Your Girlfriend Was P A T," <laughs> and then you sing it again, and then when it says "Don't You," you go "Butcher." <laughs> She's fucking ruined it for us. <laughs> Made it funnier, but ruined you, it. The thing is, ever since I heard it that way from these guys at school, I have never been able to hear that song any other way. <laughs> Them fucking singing Pat Butcher. <laughs> Don't you wish your girlfriend was Pat Butcher? Yeah. Fucking yes, mate. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I've ruined that and how many stairs you do in a fucking cover tea for people. Yeah. Yeah, you have. But to be fair, they're both quite good things, though. Yeah. They are quite good things. We were going to try and go to the punk rock museum again we ran out of time and to be fair that was an afterthought so well we didn't know about it until like maybe a couple of days before and by yeah. which point on saturday it was my birthday we were going to try and go for breakfast somewhere or brunch we were going to try and get tattooed um we were going to circus circus yeah. obviously that was the day we were leaving we wanted to have one last drink in the bar with peter because he hadn't been in for a day or two and we wanted to say goodbye to him yeah and then had to obviously get to the airport you get to the airport a few hours before yeah so we were crammed. Absolutely yeah. fucking crammed. Um, but next time. Next time. Um, should we briefly not go into masses of detail, but talk about um, Peter getting me wasted? Yeah. Because you looked after me. Bless you. <laughs> and Spence did as well. So I'll put it out there. I'm normally the one that goes a little bit too far. <laughs> I will fall asleep on a bathroom floor and have locked the door so <laughs> people can't get in or they don't know where I've gone like it happened at a family party once when we were having Frida Fest um I'd started taking 
sort of medication again, things were bad, that sort of thing. And I just, you know, my body had stopped telling me when I'd had enough. Yep. And I could be absolutely fine. Then it will be maybe a mouthful of the next drink and I'm fucking gazeboed. Yeah, it's like one to the other. Yeah. Um, so last thing I remember was talking at that party was talking to my to cousin Kyle, his mm. wife Nat, and um, and then all of a sudden I went missing, <laughs> <laughs> and it was at Uncle Axel's house and they've got a swimming pool and Mark was like, has anyone checked the swimming pool? No, seriously, has anyone checked the swimming pool? Thinking that I might have accidentally hell. drowned. Anyway, I'd taken myself off into the living room. I was asleep on the sofa. I'd taken my shoes off. <laughs> so, so, so good. So, the, you know, so that that's that's what happened is usually what I would do or what would happen to me um, because I can take it a little bit too far. Anyway... There'd been a slight altercation, a verbal altercation, shall we say? Yes. In no uncertain terms. Yes. I was ready to throw down. She was. She was going to cut a bitch. I was going to cut a bitch. And <laughs> Spence was very much on the verge as well, but he was keeping a better head than I was. Bless him. Anyway, you'd got upset. Yeah. So I went into the bathroom, you know, we're chilling you out. Everyone calling you beautiful as they're coming out the toilet having, after having a shit. <laughs> <laughs> all of that lot. anyway so got to the point where you felt you could go out and um we went straight up to the bar after getting numerous phone calls from said person yeah um and so we said to peter look really upset what have you got he got like, a knife out actually initially, didn't he? He did. Yeah, he <laughs> like something that he chops up limes with. He was like, right, where is he? <laughs> like we'd clearly made an impression on Peter, and um, and you and he was saying like sambuca or tequila, and you were like, no, that I can't do. He was like, okay, I've got something for you, but of course he free pours. Yeah, and they was, free pour in America, yeah. and it's crazy. And it was fucking bourbon, and it was about two inches worth of yeah. bourbon, <laughs> and you necked it. Yes. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't drink a lot, and when I and I haven't got stupidly drunk since I was literally a teenager because I don't like feeling sick. Mm. I have anxiety about vomiting, so I don't like to get to that stage. Um, so this was not intentional. I, I no. don't know why I didn't think it would do that, but I didn't think it would do that. The thing is, you you know, you were sticking to like one drink mainly, like yeah. most of the time that we were there, which was a mimosa. Mimosa. Um, but again, they don't measure them how. We would measure them. We have more orange juice than we do Prosecco, yeah. but they have more Prosecco than they do orange juice. It's like literally a whoop. Yeah. That's it. Um, <laughs> anyway, we went and sat back down after you'd gone. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking rank. I remember it was disgusting. It fucking warmed you up from your toes, that one did. It really did. Um, and then on the table in front of us was Jaeger. Not a Jaeger bomb. I See, after the bar, after down in that drink, I don't remember anything. I'm not fucking surprised. That K lied. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a, a Jaeger. Um, said person had bought Jaegers, and because it was our brother's favourite drink, we were like, right, we'll have one. I mean, he Richard liked a Jaeger bomb, not just Jaeger. Yeah. But we drank it, even after what had happened, didn't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't like you, but we'll take your fucking drink, all right? Yeah, well, <laughs> you say that. Um, and then... Things got heated again. See, I don't remember any of this. Spence ended up not, I think, maybe a little bit with you, but in the end, you just and fell asleep on Spence. <laughs> Poor he Spence. Fell, uh, no, he was just cuddling. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this is all right. <laughs> um, and, yeah, things got heated again. Spence was telling him to go to the party that we were supposed to be going to. Yeah, it's like, so, probably best if you I'm leave. so pissed off because I basically ruined the night for all of us. And I'm really, no, you really didn't. Annoyed. You didn't. Um... Anyway, after you've been asleep for a little while, you're like, I think I'm starting to feel a bit sick, so I take you to the toilet. <laughs> and you're, do you're doing your thing, and I'm trying to get you to go upstairs. In a minute. <laughs> In a I just can stay here for a bit. <laughs> anyway, the, like, not necessarily like a security guard, like they're dressed in like a blazer, and, or, you know, just a really lovely woman who worked for the hotel, some sort of security capacity. Yeah. Um, and she came in at the right time because I needed to go and get our bags with the, the 
your bag and I was leaving my bag with Spencer but getting like a the hotel key card so I could take you upstairs but you just weren't fucking coming and I was like could you just stay with her and I'll go and get the bits and I'll be back and I can take her up and she's like should I get her a wheelchair <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Geek was laughing at me. And I was like, Helen, do you want a wheelchair? No. <laughs> I was like, okay, fuck, how am I going to get her upstairs? Anyway, I come back and uh, this woman's still with you, bless her. I think, I don't know whether she's been talking to you or not, what have you. I don't know. And um, again, I asked, do, do you want a wheelchair? No, I'm, d- I'm just going to stay here. It's <laughs> like, you're fucking not. <laughs> And um, and then I was like, yeah, can you go get a wheelchair? So she brings a wheelchair in and the way I got you up. <laughs> Helen, I've got a really comfy chair for you to sit in. <laughs> Lifted you up by the armpits. Oh my God, and I'm you, so you willingly got up at that point because you thought it was going to be a really comfy chair. <laughs> I sat you in and you were just like that. <sighs> and we took you all the way upstairs. And uh, so sorry. the craziest thing was though, like, I tried to get you in your pyjamas, but it was really difficult. <laughs> so I just left you and tucked you in. I put the bin by the side of you. Aww. And I went back downstairs because I was like, they don't, there's nothing on the TV and there's no fucking kettle no, no. because they don't want you to stay in your room. Exactly. So I went back downstairs. Spence was still there, obviously. Um, fuck it. Dickhead comes back. <laughs> like, oh, really? Yeah. So, oh, I didn't know that. So at that point we were joined by like Owen and Grace and Matt. Right. Um, and Brad and stuff like that. Um, Spence ended up going to bed. No. No, I think no, I think Spence was still there anyway. Dickhead comes back. I get him to buy me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start having a go at him again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, listen, bitch. <laughs> I will take a bullet for that fucking woman. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, that was probably one of the nicest things I'd said. <laughs> um, oh, God, I just, yeah, I, I, I'm I, very, I have to be so careful with my drink. Mm. I really do, because otherwise it's just like, she's gone. Yeah. And I hate to feel it. The thing is, I've got, I have to be careful with my liver because of my previous trigger warning yeah. um, attempted overdoses and things yeah. like that. So, um, you know, the, what I took can quite affect me yeah, <laughs> and has affected me. Yeah. So I kind of have to be, I, I should be more careful. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that that was the only night and the emotion and things like that, at, the, at that point you're just like, oh, fuck it. And do you know what? I don't fucking blame you because it was just a horrible situation to be in. Yeah, was, for this you person to be put really in. surprised me. Like, I, I, in fact, like... I'm really disappointed in him and I don't really want to speak to him again because it was... Yeah, disgusting. that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And to be honest with you, I mean, from previous goings on in the relationship, I've always said to you, like, it's, you know, just be careful. Yeah. Sort of thing. And so I wasn't... You're just sticking up for your sister. Yeah. And put me in a wheelchair. <laughs> put you in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> and the best thing was, by the end of the night, when I've gone upstairs to bed... You fucking taking your clothes off, got into your pajamas, <laughs> taking your hair extensions off. I'm like, this bitch is crazy. And then in the morning, you're like, you're right. How are you not dead? <laughs> How? I saw the state of you. How are you not dead? I think, and I didn't have a hangover, but the thing was, I got very tired that yeah. day. That's the only thing. Yeah. But I didn't have a hangover. And it got to the point where, like, we couldn't talk properly that we were that tired. <laughs> and Talina had come over and I was talking to her, but I was kind of hysterical because I was so tired <laughs> at that point. Because I think that was the night that I had sort of the most to drink over the week. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I was just so tired. But apparently I get really funny when I'm tired. <laughs> I got really like it was quite hysterical. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't brain. Can't like, it brain. just it just gone to pot really. Oh dear, no, it was really embarrassing though. We still haven't talked that much about Seema. No, <laughs> that's why so, people are listening. <laughs> also, just to tell you what Seema is, it's the biggest car trade show in the world. It's absolutely massive. You cannot comprehend the size of this place, and the reason why it's so popular with custom. And sort of modified car people is because you'll get stands selling exhausts, tires, wheels, oil, all the bits you need for mm. your cars. Um, 
wholesale because uh, you can't actually buy anything there. And they will have a custom vehicle, modified vehicle, restored vehicle on their stand mm. to bring people in. And it's normally got one of their parts on them. Yeah. So, you know, it's they've used the oil or they've got the tyres on, whatever. Um, so they will almost be a sponsor of that mm. build. And so they'll have... And it's a very, very, very big thing to have a build at SEMA. Yeah. And a lot of people from this country will actually ship cars over... Um, it's a massive deal if you if you get a custom car over at SEMA. Um, so so there's a lot as well as all like the buying bits. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cool cars to look at, oh. and there's sections. So you didn't see too much of it, but there's like a four by four section, a mo motorsport section. So it's all kind of section like that. Yeah. And then normally the cars will kind of been related to that, but they could be anything because they're just bonkers. And we saw. Oh, God, I've forgotten his bloody name now. Any, Raul. Ra the, the, the Japanese designer that is Raul Welt. Um, I don't have my notes with me, so I can't... I can't, um, I can't remember his name. I know I feel really bad. Um, but he was doing a live build mm. there, which was amazing. That was quite funny. Because like, oh, let's go over and have a look. And you're like, oh, I can't actually see him. I was like, is it the one with the crazy hair? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's him. I was that's like, I have never heard of him before that moment. And um, yeah, I spotted him before you. I was like, oh, yeah, go me. He had really cool trousers on. In really cool trousers. Yeah. It's it's Raul Well. It's R-A-U-H. Oh, is it? It'll come out. Akira Nakai. That's it. Yeah, I should fucking remember that. Um, but I'd, I'd never seen him before. And it's you don't get to see him really very often. So it, that was like seeing a unicorn making ice cream that was like fucking bonkers um, that was like exclusive yeah very very exclusive and they had some really cool examples of um some of his railway porsches there and we well i've ended up talking to um oh there was ian what was the name of the other guy like friends with him now on I instagram we've been talking loads um, but yeah, I feel really bad. Cool, really cool cars. So I'm shit at fucking remembering names. I do I? know. I think his Instagram's like R W Slut or something. It is. Yeah. It is. It's R W Slut. Uh, check out his Instagram because uh, his car's fucking gorgeous. It's oh, the same colour it? as mine. And I was just like, I was oh, in there. I was like, can I touch it? Because it's all like silk inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because he'd he'd done the interior out of vintage mm. kimonos, hadn't yeah. he? Which was just absolutely beautiful. It was stunning. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we didn't even see uh, like a portion of it. There was no. so much. And they where our hall was, where, where I was working, there was lots of the lifted trucks, which mm. were amazing, weren't they? They're like no. mini monster trucks. It was fucking insane. Mm. Like they were something to behold. And yeah. I loved the, there was one that just on the, I was um, wearing the mental health car club clothing one day and um, the mental strength gym clothing on another or on the same day, same day. And um, there was one truck that just said, don't blow your temper, blow your horn. Yeah. And I was just like, that's just to make that sort of an am amalgamation of both of like the mental health and the car communities coming together. Yeah. Which was fabulous. Yeah. yeah. It was very cool. We, we shared some photos of that. I'll actually, I'll put those photos on our, our car's yeah. Instagram as well. It's not the one on my face with, I think it's, um, if you do the back of the okay. mental health car club one. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that on there. Uh, but yeah, there was, and there was a custom Hummer there that had cost a million pounds. Uh, I didn't actually like it. Sorry. It um, wasn't my cup of tea. But there was the guys that um, won, did they win the best build? Um, best interior. Best interior. That was yeah. it. And they had this insane story of how they got the car over. Yeah. Fuck. fuck. I should have written down all these people. We'll give them, we'll give them a shout out. Yeah. The and next then one, but on the, on the post on Instagram, we can link them. Yes. All their yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah, he won, they won best interior and the, the, I'm not going to remember the story fully, but basically the car belonged to someone who was going to pay to get it shipped out. Um, he said, get it on a plane, don't care how much it costs. Anyway, it, got, it was getting closer and closer to time. They hadn't sent the money, so they ended up buying the car, getting a loan. I think it ended up costing like 380 grand. It was just the most insane story. Yeah, it's yeah. that's the thing. People will break their necks to get to SEMA, mm -hmm. so it's, it is very special. Like I'd love to have a car there one day. I don't know if to be fair. In fact, you got there. sponsored to go out there and yeah, showcase your work is insane. Yeah, I... I yeah, I, I'm still not... It's because I have the side effect of um, 
what is it called? Disassociation. D yeah, disassociation. I do struggle with what I've dreamt and what is real. So I spend my life not knowing whether I'm dreaming or fucking not, which is quite fun, but sometimes I'm like, well, did that happen or not? So it, sometimes I'm a bit like, did that happen mm. or did... So I have to, like, pinch myself. But, yeah, that was... I had a wonderful time. I can't believe they asked me to be on their stand. Like, I was absolutely honoured. Um, and that's pipes exhaust and cold case radiators, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I believe cold case radiators do a radiator for my Jeep. Nice. I think they do. So, um, and actually, pipes exhaust probably do an exhaust for it because it's an American car, so... Um, but, yeah, it was... Honestly, they are just the nicest people in the world. Yeah. And... The petrol hedonism crew anyway are just, they're literally lifesavers to so many people because they're so good with um, talking about mental health and mm. Chiro checks in on me all the time. Yeah. And he's always like, listen, you're not alone if you're having troubles, like t speak up because it's, you know, we are such a tight community. Yeah. And I feel very, very privileged to be part of that crew and friends with all of them yeah. because they're, they're amazing people and they're all so clever and talented. Yeah. And it was really nice, like, on the Saturday uh, when it was my birthday, um, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't really anything going on and stuff, and um, they'd asked, I think, Spence what we were up to, and Spence was like, oh, it's Ali's birthday, we're going to go do this, this, and this. And then they were like, oh, we'll come along. So they wanted to yeah. spend the, my birthday with me, which was really nice. And that was, like, Owen, Grace, and Matt. Um, and, yeah, we just we had a really nice time, apart from the fact that we spent ages trying to find this one vegan place to eat. Yeah. And then we got there. And it closed 15 minutes earlier. But... Like, for fuck's sake. The Italian place that Grace then found... Yes. ...I think was actually probably better anyway. Do you know what? They were so sweet because they're like, no, we won't eat anywhere unless you can have something. Yeah, bless them. They're so mm. sweet. And do you remember the crazy guy in the street? Yes. When we were... That was when we were on the way to Circus Circus, wasn't it? It was. So that was... So we'd spent some time sort of at the Venetian... Um, yeah. ...and whatnot. And Matt... So on the, on the tables... Um, it was quite clever, really. So on the table at the restaurant, there was like this paper covering on top of the cloth and there was some crayons in. So if the kids are going, they can just draw on the table, which was amazing. So <laughs> Matt was ripping off a bit and he was like keeping it secret what he was doing. He made me a handmade happy birthday badge, <laughs> which I managed to hook onto the bottom of my jacket. It eventually fell off, unfortunately. Um, and like him and Spence were just drawing all over the fucking tables and then... Spence had got them to uh, organise me a dessert and everyone sang, sang happy birthday to him and everything. It was just really special. It was really lovely to spend, obviously, that time with them because I haven't really been... <laughs> How many cocks were drawn? I, I think just one or maybe two. Yeah, it wasn't... It yeah, wasn't it wasn't overly cockified. No. <laughs> it's quite... <laughs> it's quite restrained. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because I've never really properly hung out with the petrol hedonism lot. Not really. They're so nice. Um, so, yeah, we I had a grand old time. The, and then, obviously, walking to Circus Circus. Yeah. Crazy, crazy guy street. having a go at, like, a family. Supposedly, he'd spat on the family. But it was like, oh, I didn't mean to. But then there was this argument. And then that crazy guy just started kicking the son of the family and yeah. stuff like that. He's walking along the street going, bitch! <laughs> 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 to be fair, I'm surprised we didn't see more of those yeah. when we were in Vegas, but that was the only one. But that was insane. Like, they were, he was proper going for yeah. him. Um, and then we could hear him behind us as he's walking along and he's still fucking chuntering away. <laughs> and then a little later on, this group of kids come up and one of them just screams in Spencer's face. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, he went, ah! And, <laughs> and then the one at the, the kid at the back turned to Matt was like, do you want to see a magic trick? And Matt was like, do you want to see a magic trick? Thinking he was going to like put his hand in his pocket and pull out like middle finger or something. And the, <laughs> the kid just turns around and goes, you're gay. <laughs> oh my God. I don't remember any of this. What really? was I doing? Walking with Spence, love. You're right next to him when he got I screamed at. I literally must have just been in another world yeah, again. maybe. But yeah, I was like, Oh, well, you're fucking original, aren't you? That's absolutely <laughs> crazy. I mean, yeah, it's crazy, cra craziest shit that's happened in Vegas. There, someone told me about one of the people who came to speak to me on the SEMA stand. Um, they told me about a haunted, abandoned opera house in the desert. <gasps> and I wrote it down. I can't remember what it was fucking called. I wrote it in my notes on my phone because mm. I thought, if we get time, but... I'm going to have to go on to obviously next trip. But that was quite cool because he was like, yeah, it's supposed to be really haunted. They've done ghost shows there and it's abandoned. I was like, that sounds amazing. Well, holy shit, balls. We, yeah. need, to, we need to do it then. And then um, 
my friend Joe, the photographer, his mate has bought a ghost town out there. Um, just bought a town. Yeah. So uh, we're we're equating quite a crew for next time as well. And um, he was like, "Oh, we need to go to my mate's ghost town." I was like, "Yes, we're there." Can we stay there for free? Probably. So <laughs> how far away is it? <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. Everything in America is far, mm. but um, and nothing is fucking cheap. No, no, Vegas is not fucking cheap at all. But uh, I could have killed for a fucking kettle in the room. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was lovely having Starbucks every day, but. It was like ten dollars a time. Yeah, you not a drink. Just, yeah, like ten dollars per drink. That we're buying two or three at a time, and you got to tip them. But the flavors were fucking worth it because they have so much more better flavors than they do over here. What was our favorite one? Chestnut and praline. Yeah, and then oh the one after that was pecan crunch. Yes. Every morning I was like, oh, yeah, I know I said that's stupid. <laughs> so much more. Better so flavors. much more better flavors." <laughs> Don't forget, I live in the Fens now. It's, yeah. And she's been hanging out with Spence from Bristol. Bristol. <laughs> the Bristol Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my love. All right, my love. I don't know her. Never heard of Never her. Never heard of her. <laughs> oh, Miss Spence. We, we, well, I did suggest that we go forth with this idea of the cult and we all live together mm. and uh, register as a religion and we don't have to pay taxes and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, it's not like our tax is going on the fucking roads anyway, is it? <laughs> Especially not down Black Hawk Bank down road. Especially not down the fucking A10 and Black Bank Hawk down Blank Road. <laughs> Mark, I had... Mark's going to get so annoying. I would call it that. <laughs> so I'd, I've had to spend 600 quid on a Jeep, <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> I don't even care if it's haunted. I kind of hope it is. As long as it works. Yeah, and doesn't throw you off a bank or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah just, uh, it can be haunted, just don't, don't die. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so we did, a, our last episode was the spooky stories, and it did very well. It did, and I've got another one. It's not a spooky story, it's about, um, it's a true crime one. Oh, okay. From Nathan. Amazing. Who, who runs the Mental Health Car Club. Fantastic. So we've already got one, and I believe Grace Autos has something she's connected with, which I'm going to try and get off her because it's yeah. very interesting. So if you've... Uh, obviously, we're not at the end of it yet, but if you've got any stories, any true crime, even if they're just weird... We don't spooky, care. We want it. We doesn't want matter it. if it's not themed to cars because the fact we're talking about it makes it themed to cars. Um, we really want to hear it because we had so much fun reading the stories last time yeah. and people seem to like them. So, And I want to put something out uh, there to the, sort of the viewers and the listeners. I just want to know your opinion of it. So with the spooky chats, obviously it's just random stuff. We, we'll try and put something car related in there. But if you wanted us to do anything else... Like, I don't know, like some sort of dark history story or, you know, during the spooky chats where we can go off on tangents, but bring it back to like a, a central point. Yeah, essentially. definitely. Well, to be and fair. And then that way we can inject sort of a bit more uh, variety, perhaps. Yeah. we. I mean, to be fair, I do normally have, because this was going to be very Vegas centric. Yeah. I have actually got a bunch of uh, the most notorious crimes um, in Vegas. But oh, I love that. Think, I mean, I can skim through them. Yeah, I think so. Um, um, I think we just wanted to tell everyone how much we fucking love Vegas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it is a Vegas-centric episode. And I am going to do a case. Um, I've been looking at Vegas serial killers, so I'm going to do a case. Nice. I'm excited on for that. that. But then whilst I was looking for that, um, I, I found this article about Las Vegas' most notorious crimes by defence lawyer Gabriel El Gasso. Oh, go on then. So, uh, bit of gassing. Bit of gassing. This is verbatim from the website. So, starting off quite early on, uh, there was the, the legend of Quayho. Uh, Quayho was a notorious Native American Las Vegas outlaw who terrorised the region in the early 1900s. Quayho has been implicated in at least six murders, beginning with the slaying of his half-brother yeah. after the murder of the wife of an El Dorado Canyon miner uh, Las Vegas authorities were determined to bring Quayho dead or alive. Mm -hmm. After years of eluding capture, Quayho's remains were discovered in a cave. Oh, blimey. Yeah, and today Quayho and his crimes are uh, Las Vegas legends. Oh. Um, there's then, obviously, there's there must be so many crimes in Vegas, I don't know how you even whittle this down to this. No. One. 
But um, there was then the murder of Martin Shoemate in December of 1967. Uh, the body of Las Vegas cab driver Marvin Shoemate. What? That's a bit annoying. It says Marvin, then it says Martin. I don't know which one it is because it's got both on here. I don't know if that's autocorrect. I apologise. <laughs> anyway, Marvin Martin Shoemate was discovered on a mountain overlooking the city. Shoemate had been shot in the chest and head. And although the murder has never been solved, it's widely believed that Benny Binion, owner of the Horseshoe Casino, ordered the hit after Shoemate plotted to kidnap Binion's son and hold him for ransom. Bloody hell. It's Marvin. Marvin. It's actually the name of my granddad. My dad's dad was called Marvin. I didn't know well, that. Mervin, but, you know. No. Then we've got uh, the death of Sonny Liston. So Sonny Liston was a legendary professional boxer. Oh, I've heard of this one. Have you? I hadn't, I hadn't heard of any of these. Um, who was found dead in his Las Vegas area home on January 5th, 1971. Liston's body was discovered by his wife, who was returning home from a two-week trip. Although the coroner said that there were not a lethal amount of heroin, there was not a lethal amount of heroin discovered in Liston's system during autopsy. Authorities attributed his death to an accidental drug overdose. Despite the official explanation for his death, many believe that Liston was murdered by the mob. Liston's mysterious death is still fresh in the consciousness of Las Vegas. And as recently as 2013, the son of a deceased mafia hitman published a book claiming that his father confessed to murdering Liston after forced drug overdose. Oh, oh, that's a bit crazy. Yeah. Um, some of you might remember my story about breaking down in front of um, Mike, Tyson. Mike Tyson. It's not connected, but sort of is. Then we've got the murder of retired FBI agent Bill Coulthard. In July 1972, a massive car bomb detonated inside uh, of a downtown Las Vegas parking garage, killing the former head of the FBI's Las Vegas office, Bill Coulthard. At the time of his death, Coulthard was a prominent local attorney and businessman who owned a stake in the land that the Horseshoe Casino was built on. Oh. This, this stuff's always connected, isn't it? Local authorities were immediately joined by the FBI and the ATF in an attempt to solve the high-profile murder. Despite a $75,000 reward for information and many wild goose chases, the case remains open to this day. The FBI believed the casino magnate Benny Binion ordered oh, the hit man. on Coulthard. Binion's involved in a few, isn't he? Yeah, when Coulthard refused to renew Binion's lease of the Horseshoe Casino. Mm. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. So we've then got uh, the robbery and execution of Al Bramlett in the 1970s. Al Bramlett was the head of one of the country's most powerful unions, Las Vegas, Las Vegas Local 226. Bramlett was notorious for his willingness to use violence to coerce <laughs> cooperation. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Um, <laughs> in 1977, Bramlett ordered bombs to be placed in front of two non-union restaurants when the bombs failed to detonate and police discovered them Bramlett refused to pay the men he hired to carry out the bombing the bombers father and son Thomas and Granby Hainley vowed revenge a month later that Hainley's forced Bramlett into a van at gunpoint they demanded payment for the botched bombing job and after Bramlett arranged a £10,000 loan to pay his kidnappers they drove him to a remote area of the Las Vegas de desert and executed him the father and son duo are serving life in prison for the murder. Ooh. Blimey, O'Reilly. We've then got an arson fire at the Las Vegas Hilton. So in 1981, Philip Klein, a troubled 23-year-old busboy at the Hilton Hotel, started a fire in the elevator lobby. That's really scary. The fire I spread... Don't like elevators. No. Trapping guests in their rooms, eight people died and over 200 were injured. Cool. That is crazy. Authorities initially believed that Klein attempted to put out the fire, but he gave himself up when he mentioned grabbing a trash can and filling it with fire. Hmm. After being convicted of eight counts of murder, Klein granted a jailhouse interview and confessed to the arson. He said that high on PCP, <laughs> he used his lighter to set fire to some curtains. Probably a good job he didn't do mescaline then, isn't it, really? <laughs> that could have been so much worse. Yeah, I quite like fire. Uh, theft of 500,000 in... Oh, this is another case, by the way. 
Theft of 500,000 in cash and chips by William John Brennan. In September of 1992, which doesn't even seem that long ago, but it actually was. Yeah, it really was. A really long time ago. Then 34-year-old William John Brennan walked out of the Stardust, which we saw the sign for. Yeah, we did. Neon Graveyard. With £500,000 in cash and chips. Yeah. Brennan was a sports book cashier at the casino. After the theft... Brennan disappeared and has not been heard of heard from since. Fucking hell, he actually got away with it. I, I, do, I know it's wrong, but I do love it when people get away with shit like this because he's not actually killed anyone. It's like Ocean's Eleven, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> I love it. It's like Ocean's Eleven. I love that film. I, I, to be fair, I did do a little bit of gambling. Not a lot because I, at our hotel, they weren't doing Texas Hold'em. They yeah. probably would have in, in others and that's my game. Um, so I played a bit of blackjack. I went up briefly and then came straight back down. <laughs> I just like to watch. I can't yeah. do it. But it is fun. If there was a poker game going on, you probably wouldn't have had me... Like, I wouldn't have moved. No. Like, so just bring my drinks over We here. did walk past a few, though, didn't we? When we were in the different hotels. They had, yeah, they had poker rooms. Yeah. Um, and stuff, but I don't know if it was Texas Hold'em. Right. I'd okay. have been out in a second. Yeah, I'm out. Fuck off. <laughs> um, an arrest warrant charging him with... 12 counts of felony theft has been issued for Brennan. However, he remains at large to this day. What other types of poker are there? Um, there's, a, there's a few. Oh. But you only play Texas Hold'em. Yeah. So that's certainly like different rules t- to yeah. other ones. You've got... Sorry, my chair's... Omaha, cool. seven card stud, five card draw is the one I was thinking of. High low Chicago. They're fun names, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, Texas Hold'em is probably the most popular one. It sounds the coolest. I wouldn't be able to play it because I don't understand numbers. You don't really have to understand numbers. You just have to understand the suits. Yeah, okay. Essentially. I like... More pl- than numbers. Yeah. I like playing gin rummy. I used to play, what was it called? Bastard. Oh. What the hell's that? Bastard. Have you ever heard of a game called I Bastard? I can't remember how to play it now, but I played that when I was in like... Maybe sixth form. Also known as... Bullshit. Oh. I think it's called... Oh, shithead. Yeah, that's it. Palace or... I've never ever heard of that. Sorry, I just went off piste. No, I I actually wanted to know about the different types of poker. And I love the idea... I think the idea of playing poker is really fucking cool. That's mainly because I like watching it on Brassic. So... I used to be one of those people that if I was up really late, two, three in the morning and poker's on TV, I'd just sit and watch it. Really? Yeah. Because they have like a glass bottom table, so they have a camera underneath so you can see this, like what people have got oh. and stuff like that. It's very that's, exciting. That's actually very cool. Did you know Tiffany, oh no, is her name Tiffany? The actress that played the Bride of Chucky. Right. She's a professional poker player. Is she? I know the girl you mean, and I've seen her face, but I don't know. Is it Tiffany? Her name. Uh, Goo's going to find out. Actress who played Bride of Chucky. Whilst he's doing that... uh, Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. That's it, not Tiffany. Yeah, Jennifer Tilly. She's a professional poker player. Yeah, I remember her really well. So next up, we've got robbery of 2.9 million from Circus Circus Casino. No way. In 1993, Heather Tallchief drove away from the Circus Circus Casino in an armoured truck with over 2.95 million inside. Fucking hell. Tallchief and her accomplice, Roberto Solis, disappeared with the millions and were not heard from for over a decade. In 2005, Tallchief turned herself in to Las Ve- into Las Vegas authorities. 2006, a federal judge sentenced Tall Chief to five years and three months in prison for her role in the heist. I'm not being funny. She'd have had to pay that money back, wouldn't she? I don't... Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, if you weren't in a position to... Mm. I would... If you, could live the, if you could live the high life for a little bit, five years, that's nothing in prison. Well, I, just, I wouldn't turn myself in, though. Well, no, you, yeah, you wouldn't. But... Oh, so it's five years of not... You, you're all right. Five years ain't that bad. So <laughs> Roberto Solis has never been found. 
Oh. And none of the stolen money has ever been recovered. Oh, well, there you go then. That's fucking cool, isn't it? So if you still got... She probably knows where he is, probably knows where the money is. Yeah. If there's any left, obviously. Oh, I might write to her and see what the crack is. Yeah. And then, you know, what, with f- that money and whatnot, I'd spend five years in jail. I don't know if I could go into jail. To be fair, that women's jails are worse than male ones. Yeah, I can well imagine. That's so yeah. Sad. Um... I can only go by what I witnessed in a male's prison and that it's not a fucking deterrent, it's not a punishment. So if it's anything, if a women's jail is anything like that, then fucking yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd do it. I wouldn't be able to have my dog in there. No. So I'd rather die. Right, kidnapping of casino mogul Steve Wynn's daughter. 1993. Um, this actually links to... One of our cases, I believe. Oh. Uh, 1993, the then 26-year-old daughter of casino mogul Steve Wynn was kidnapped and held for ransom. Well, maybe not. Two armed men abducted Wynn's daughter from her home and demanded £2.5 for her return. The kidnappers settled for £1.45 when Wynn told them that that was all he could get from the vault that night. He put the money in a plastic bag and left it in a car a couple of miles off the strip. After picking up the ransom, the kidnappers called Wynn and told him he could find his daughter in a parked car at a local airport. The young woman was shaken and tied up, but safe. The perpetrators were arrested days later when one of them attempted to buy a £200,000 car in cash, <laughs> arousing su- the suspicions of law enforcement. <laughs> Fucking dickhead, just wait a minute and don't... So, oh, <laughs> people are so stupid. I mean, I'm an impatient person, but you just don't do that. <sighs> Exactly. Be smart. You've got to wash it first. <laughs> so then, you'll have heard of this, the murder of Tupac Shakur. Yep. On the 7th of September in 1996, 25-year-old hip-hop legend Tupac, Tupac Shakur suffered fatal gunshot wounds in a Las Vegas drive-by shooting. I didn't actually realise this was in Vegas. I thought it was in LA. Hmm. Tupac was arrested... No, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Tupac was the passenger in a car driven by Death Row Records founder Suge Knight. Suge? Suge. C- S-U-G-E? Mm-hmm. Suge. Suge. When, while stopped at a red light at an intersection of um, East Flamingo Road and Coval Lane, uh, a, f- a white four-door late model Cadillac approached and opened fire. I think we drove past East Flamingo. Yeah, I think we did. When we were going to the house for dinner. Yes. Mm. Tupac was hit four times, once in the arm, once in the thigh and twice in the chest. He survived his initial injuries and was rushed to hospital, but he died there six days later of respiratory failure leading to cardiac arrest. Mm. The murder of Tupac Shakur devastated fans and the hip-hop community and remains officially unsolved to this day, which is bonkers. Crazy, isn't it? Um, so I also read possibly another conspiracy theory that, once again, Diddy is somewhat involved. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking conspiracy theories They're, surrounding Diddy at the moment. I do love there? conspiracy theories, but could they give, give me an existential crisis yeah. immediately. So I have to stay away from them. So then next up, a lot of shit happened in the 90s. Mm-hmm. So we've now got the shooting of Herbert Bill, Bill Blitz, Blitzstein. <laughs> Fuck my life. Blitzstein. In January 1997, Las Vegas mob legend... Fuck me. Mlob. 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 Mob legend Herbert Fat Herbie Blitzstein... (laughs) Fat Herbie. ...was shot execution style in his home. Seven mob members from Buffalo and Las Vegas were arrested in connection with the murder plot. Rival gang members wanted him out of the way so they could take over his numerous profitable street rackets including prostitution, insurance fraud and loan sharking. Fat Herbie was a fixture in the Las Vegas underworld and was a member of a burglary ring known as the Hole in the Wall... Oh, <laughs> the Hole in the Wall Gang. <laughs> For fuck's sake. The movie Casino mem- oh. mem- memorialised <laughs> the popular gangster. Fucking I'm so hell. sorry, I'm crucifying this. With the fictional <laughs> character Bernie Blue who was created in his likeness. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll watch that slightly differently next time. Goobs won't, because he won't watch any movies. <laughs> no. Shall I keep going? I've, got, I've only got a few more. Yeah, go uh, on. Well, I won't read them all. I'll tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the one about the murder of Ted Binion. 
Um, so in 1998, Ted Binion was found dead on the floor of his Las Vegas home. Binion was a wealthy gambling executive and his father, Benny Binion, yeah. was a Las Vegas legend and casino magnate. A cocktail of prescription and illegal drugs was found in Binion's system and his death was initially thought to be a suicide. However, Las Vegas detectives believed that the scene of his death had been staged and six months later reclassified the manor as... Um, manor it as... What? Reclassified the manor it as homicide. Reclassified. Re- reclassified. Reclassified. <laughs> reclassified. Raw, bro. The manor as homicide. I think that's what it was meant to say. <laughs> Raw bro. Raw bro. In June 1999, Binion's girlfriend and her lover were arrested for his murder. The Mm -hmm. pair was convicted, but their murder convictions were overturned in 2003. In their 2004 retrial, same age as my Jeep, they were each acquitted (laughs) of murder and convicted of lesser charges in connection with Binion's death, including robbery and grand larceny. Both have since been released. Um... I mean, there's so many. There's I, I might keep some more for another time and yeah. go slightly further into depth with them, but there's uh, Luxor. I thought you Car- did the top ten. No, what was this? Top, what is it? No, it just says the most notorious oh, crimes, so they okay. just kept going. <laughs> I really made that up in my head. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, but there's there's some really good ones. Um, I'll, I might read the most recent. That was... We've got another robbery. I do like to read about robberies. So we had a robbery of 1.5 million in chips in December of 2010. A man drove his motorcycle up to the Bellagio Hotel and Casino, walked inside, still wearing his motorcycle helmet. He walked up to the craps table and robbed it at gunpoint, making off with 1.5 million in chips. Although the so-called biker bandit was able to escape with the chips, problems arose when he attempted to cash them. (laughs) Fucking ticket. I mean, <laughs> the thief operating under the handle Biker Bandit went online <laughs> to attempt to arrange the sale of some of the stolen £25,000 Do chip. people not think they're going to be traceable? I mean, come on, mate. Undercover police officers arranged a meeting at the Bellagio to buy the chips and arrested 29 He went old. back to the scene of the fucking yeah, of crime as well. did. Jesus. Uh, and they arrested 29-year-old Anthony Carlio... When he showed up to sell them, Carlio is serving three to 11 years in prison for the heist. That name's becoming synonymous with fucking idiots, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I thought that was going to be, a, I mean, it's fucking ballsy, but you just didn't follow yeah. through, mate. Then we've got, like, there was um, a pipe bombing in the Luxor parking garage. Mm. Um, quite a few unsolved attacks on Las Vegas homeless, which makes me very sad. Murder of Melissa James. I think maybe save some more for another time. Yeah, then we've got quite a few. Bellagio cashier cage robbery, murder of Christine Smith, the shooting of. Oh no, I've done that. Yeah, so there's a few more. Yeah. But very interesting because yeah. obviously there's a lot of crimes in Vegas. But yeah, but I think it's to be expected because it's literally everywhere's a fucking casino. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Everywhere's um, a fucking casino, and it's you know. And there's a lot of alcohol. Mm. There's a lot of obviously, well, not got to worry about weed, but weed's legal there now. So then you've got like downtown Vegas, which isn't very safe. That's a little bit uh, crazy. Do you know one thing that was, it was great that we did it, but was very underwhelming when we walked to go see the Vegas sign. Yes, that was my fault because in the six, six times I've been to Vegas, I've never seen the Vegas sign. And you just expect it to be a lot fucking bigger than what it was. Did expect it to be bigger. And I think because we went to the neon boneyard, uh, I know that we went to that afterwards, but I'd already been to it. And that is so gorgeous and wonderful and lovely to look at. That Yeah, the Vegas sign was just a little bit small. But I'm really glad we saw it mm. for two seconds. And then we were like, yeah, right, should we go get fucking fucking queuing up to take photos. Like, oh, fucking fuck this shit. <laughs> um, do you have a get in the bin for today? Either of you? Yeah. Go on then. And I'm surprised you haven't thought of it. So this one's for both of us. Well, I've got one, though. Narcissists. Fucking narcissists. Fucking narcissists. Well, I don't know why I didn't think you were going to say that. I'm sick to death of fucking narcissists. (laughs) You're like a magnet for them. I know. I don't understand. Um, But, yeah, fucking narcissists can get in the fucking bin. They can get in the bin. Scrounging... 
motherfucking maggots. Yeah. Literally, who just leech off people. Yeah. Yeah. I they can. They're just a fucking bunch of pipes and can go fucking sit on a shovel. Yeah. I agree. Uh, do you have a get in my pocket? Vegas. Love that. Vegas is in every single fucking pocket. Yeah. A- <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah. So Goob's get in the bin is the state of your glasses. <laughs> Um, before we came out, I couldn't tell if her eyes were open. <laughs> he said something, I looked up and he went, oh, for fuck's sake, Alison. <laughs> Took him off me and then started cleaning. I was like, oh, thanks. He's like, no, I couldn't tell if you were actually fucking looking at me or not. I'm like, oh. I was like, I do need to get new ones. He goes, that doesn't change how dirty they are. Yeah, you just and got to clean them. And then he looked at me and he goes, they're, they're quite scratched as well, aren't they? I oh, I bet. Like, yeah. Like, but they are, were fucking hideously disgusting. Yeah. My windscreen's the same. Yeah, and the then you put those two things together and it's fucking How chaos. I'm getting anywhere in the world, no. I don't fucking know. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm going to sneak by and like clean it one time in the night. Considering I'm really hot on like road safety. <laughs> yeah, you are actually. That No, you're not with that though. So <laughs> Goob's get in his pocket is the week that him, Eddie and Reggie had when we were in Vegas. Which is amazing. We, I got, I was, it's the only time I'm not stressed about leaving Reg with anyone is when he's with either of you two mm-hmm. or Jessica. And M. And M. Yeah, obviously M's included in yeah. that. Um, and I just knew he'd been, he'd be taken care of and he had a bloody lovely time. He and really didn't really did. care to see me. <laughs> we got back and like normally if you, you arrive, Reggie gets so excited, he starts parking, he does zoomies. We got home. We got evils, I think. I, w- I don't know. No, he was just like, it almost was like, so I have to go home now. Yeah, yeah. You could see it in his face, couldn't you? Yeah. You could see it in his face. There was like no energy <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That bitch is back. <laughs> Bollocks. So my get in the bin is the fucking roads, the state of the fucking roads. Yeah. I want to see a printout with supporting imagery of what my road tax is fucking paying for because it certainly isn't paying to fill in holes in the fucking road. Yeah, it's really not. And then my get in my pocket is I bought a Jeep for 600 quid. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it's got heated seats and a manual sunroof and a cassette player. Uh, <laughs> have you got a random fact, babe? Uh, come back to me with a fact. All right. Uh, my random fact is that I've never been on a first date I've never been on a first date. I've got one coming this up has, and I'm excited. Yeah, so this has recently come to light because you do actually have a first date coming up. I know. I normally date people I already know. Well, clearly um, that's not fucking worked, has it? So. No, and Noel hasn't called. Although, to be fair, you do know this one. I do know him Ish. from a very long time ago. Yeah. yeah. That's fine, though. And my chat-up line was, all right, mate, what's the crack? <laughs> <laughs> Goobs. Are you going to read his? Yeah, so... Gilbert, uh, growing up in a sleepy village, we used to put things like tubes of cheese and froobs in the road for cars to run over and decorate nearby houses. <laughs> <laughs> you lot were fucking little shits growing up. They had proper... Asbos. Yeah, but uh, village asbos. Village fucking asbos. But they had like proper childhoods because they lived yeah. in, a, in a village and things like that. Yeah. Um, they did all sorts of fun stuff. Like when you found... It wasn't surfboards. What was it? Um... Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll save that for another fact. Ignore that. Windsurf. Yeah. Where the fuck did you find them? Windsurf. Well, they were just in the village. So they... Side of the road? <laughs> what, somebody just dumped them there? With a take me sign. Oh, my God, that's amazing. But we'll we'll save that for... That's really very I don't know, cool. another story, because that is... That's fun. Like, they had a proper... Yeah. I think we did, though. I would say I definitely did. I mean, I was arrested twice by the time I was 13. <laughs> But I like, <laughs> I mean, like not towny kids, like yeah. the village kids. That it was just good, wholesome fun. I used to make camps with my where friends. I can just imagine like old people coming out and just going oh with their fists, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, instead of, in my case, it was the police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck off. The, yeah, the dog lady. Oh, she did do that. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> love it. It's like a storybook childhood. Fen asbos. <laughs> Um, you might have to help me with my fact. Um, you'd never been to Vegas before. You have now. Yeah, I, I've now fazbos. Fazbos. Would it be fez, <laughs> fezbos? 
Fosmos. Fucking Fosmos. That's a new thing that we've coined. Courtesy yeah. of Goobs. Well done. Um, fuck, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I'd never been to Vegas before. No. And... Oh, tell you... No, I've got a fact. Go on. I'm absolutely obsessed with um, soft pretzels. Oh, my God. Soft pretzels, yeah. I discovered that in 2015 when I went to New York. And yep. ever since... There's just, I've never had another one like it until we went to Vegas and I got another soft pretzel and I was like, life. Yeah, life. life. And I was a shit vegan because I ate a cheese pretzel and I put Cheetos in my face. She did. She, she was, so twice recently you've been a shit vegan. You yeah. squished a moth and then you ate cheese. No, I didn't eat the moth. You don't have to I've eat it. I've been killing it. loads of moths because the bastards are fucking... Yeah, but you're still killing an animal and it's still not very vegan. It's not just about eating the animal. No. No, I don't kill other animals. It's just fucking... I had to repair my black jumper yesterday because a moth had eaten through the fucking arm. It's a really good job you're good at sewing then, isn't it? Yeah, but I... You know what I'm like with the lights in this place? I'm like a vampire, so I didn't want to turn the lights on, so I'm just kind of going like this and hoping for the best. I don't even know if I sewed the hole up or not. You should just put the ring light on. I shouldn't have done, really. Anyway, yeah, so I had... I was a shit vegan, goobs. I had Cheetos, but they're so good, though. It's my one... Last time I went to Vegas, I couldn't sleep. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and just started eating Cheetos. It's a thing I do. Well, I mean, we didn't really eat the best in, in Vegas. No. Things were very limited. Like the, Yeah. Oh, next time we'll talk about the Cornish Pasty Co. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. Because that was fucking that. amazing. We will talk about that next time. So we got a few snacks from the shop, which cost a mortgage. Yeah. Um, like, literally, there was a bag of Lay's Classic... Like original flavor, it cost eleven fucking dollars. Yeah, it's very. It was it was like a share bag, but only half of it was full, and it was still eleven fucking dollars. Vegas baby. Yeah. Yeah. So if you would like (laughs) to send us your spooky stories, weird stories, true crime stories, any of those, you can go to our link tree, which is linktree forward slash cosmicarb, and all of our contact details are on there. So everywhere you can listen, everywhere you can watch our email, all the things. Um, obviously follow us on Instagram follow yeah. us on TikTok follow us individually as well we would appreciate if you that fancy it yeah um, oh, no, I, I say not no do it I, yeah do it although my Instagram is starting to look a lot like yours because it's just got mainly cars and the that's alright that's good <laughs> that's fine after you've tagged me in it to be a re- like a in, reviewer or invite um, me to be a collaborator con- yeah yeah I'm like okay <laughs> That's fine. That makes life easier for us. Massive thanks to Gooba, Park Lane Studios, the for goo. the sound and the video so that the sound and vision is professional even when the content isn't. Yeah. Um, and I think we've warbled on for long enough. Oh my God, an hour and 15. Thank you so much if you have listened for this long. Yeah, well done um, you. Pat and on the back. We highly, highly, highly recommend a visit to Vegas, mm-hmm. a visit to the Haunted Museum, Neon Boneyard, which is also known as the Neon Museum. The Casbah Lounge at the Sahara and ask for Peter. Yeah. The Sahara is a great hotel. I haven't stayed there before, but the uh, Lift never worked, elevators probably. never worked. And apparently that's a thing. And the monorail. Yeah. Monorail. Uh, escalators. Oh, fuck. Monorail escalators didn't work either. Yes, yeah, Sahara needs to up their game with that. But customer service was amazing. Mm. So thank you very much. Uh, so until next time, stay, stay spooky, spooky, bitches. bitches.